Yeah. Well, let's go to John the fourth chapter. You guys are a great, great group of people to teach. It's just like you open your mouth and all of a sudden everything comes out. And that's because of the, of the faith that is here to receive. In John 4, Father, thank you for giving us guidance again. As we continue to bring forth your word this day. In John 10, I mean John 4, Jesus meets a woman of Samaria. And he goes to Samaria to show that the love of God goes beyond all. Boundaries. And he comes in contact with a woman at a well. This was normally the place where women and men would go to find each other. That was one of its purposes. If you, were us, if you were with us during the time of the of the uh, crusade, the message that I gave came from this passage. Yeah, and we talked about how this city, Sychar, was also known as the city of the curse. So Jesus went to the city of the curse in Samaria. Samaria. And it says in verse 7, verse 7 Then cometh a woman of Samaria to him to draw water. John 4, verse 7. Yes. And she said, give me to drink. Now notice verse 8, for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. So there is another verse to tell you that Jesus had money. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God. Romans 5.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a gift. The new birth is a gift that we receive Amen. by receiving Jesus as our Savior. And he says, And who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living, living, Hallelujah. living water. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So here we see that this water he's talking about is not a natural water, it's a spiritual water. And Jesus, in verse 13, he makes mention of this again. In verse 11 and 12, she's thinking natural, but Jesus is speaking spiritual. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Talking about the natural water. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, a well of water that springs up to everlasting life. You see, God made man in his likeness, in his image. And God made man to have spiritual relationship and fellowship with him as a son, a daughter. And so is and 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 God is a spirit. We were made in his image and his likeness. The first part of you is spirit. And then you have a soul. And you live in a body. That's what Paul writes to the Thessalonians. That we are spirit, soul, and body. And so spiritually we were made to be one with God and God one with us. To be re in relationship with Him. And until that relationship is there, man is, is, there's like a void in his life that is not filled. And he's satisfied. He's looking for something that he cannot find any other way but through Jesus. You understand? But when we find Jesus, we are born again. And in Isaiah, let me give you the right reference, you can write it down. In Isaiah, the 12th chapter and verse 3, Yes, yes, I twelve verse three. It talks about the well of salvation that we drink from. And in this scripture, Jesus says we get this well of water in us that will spring up. Anybody know what a spring is? In, a, in America, I come from both a farm and a camp. And on, and on our camp, particularly during the springtime when there's lots of rain, out of the side of the hills on the camp, there is water that runs and runs and runs. In fact, we have a place on the side of a hill where we have a water slide at the camp. And at the top of the water slide, there's a spring. And this spring is always coming out of the side of the hill. 
And so we use that water in the water slide. Well, when we get born again, we have a well of water that is to be a spring that we drink from all the time. You need love. Love is there. It's in you. You need joy. Joy is there. Well, how do you drink from joy? You just start praising God. Even in the midnight hour. Ooh, you're, fe- you're feeling a little bit down in your soul. And you just start praising God. And the joy of God kicks in. The peace of God. You go back to his word, the revelation that your born again spirit brings forth. And it'll settle your soul. And the Holy Spirit will be there to comfort you. Understand. You're awesome on the inside. Sorry. You are awesome on the inside. You know, every one of you look great outside. You got nice clothes on. You got nice colors on. You're beautiful looking people. But you know what? On the inside, you have no imperfections. You're so beautiful. You're even more beautiful inside than what you are outside. And when we can get what's inside of you flowing from the inside out, you shine. And people say, wow, there's something different about that person. You ever notice people right after they get born again how their eyes change? I see that so many times. Wow, they have this glow, this glitter in their eyes. Eyes are the window of the soul. Many times when people are demon possessed and I cast those spirits out, I tell the people, look me in the eyes. And their eyes will. They'll go all over the place. Because those devils don't want to come out. But you look at me. And you look straight in in Jesus' name. Come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank God people get free. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his delivering power. So, well of water that we drink from. Everybody say, well of water that we drink from. Well of water that we drink from. Prosperity is there. He'll show you what to do. It's there. Think about it. It says he supplies all of our needs according to his riches. In glory. Where's the glory? Where's the glory? Who is the glory? Who is the glory? The glory is the Holy Spirit. And where's the Holy Spirit? Jesus said to them, he'll be with you, but he's going to be in you. How many of you got the Holy Spirit in you? If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have the glory in you. Hallelujah. When the glory's in you, he'll start working through you and you'll even prosper in your life. When you put your hand to do something, his hand is there doing it. 
And he'll show you what to put your hand to. And he will cause that hand to prosper. You sow your seed. You see, we don't sow the seed to get blessed. We have the seed and we have the ability to sow it and because we have the seed and the ability to sow it the blessing flows. You are blessed to be a farmer. Do you see that? Amen. It's not that we give to get the blessing. We're already blessed. Hallelujah. But because we're blessed, we can sow the seed and it will multiply. You need to teach the people you're blessed. You need to teach your people you're not poor. Why? Because Jesus became poor. You need to teach your people you're not sick. Why? Because Jesus took the stripes in his body for your healing. You see, first we identify with who we are and what we have. And then out of that identification, the manifestation of those promises come. Can you see that? Oh, Lord, bless me. Please bless me. Please. No, Ephesians 1 3 says, we, he says, and you hath he blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places by Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Where's the heavenly place? That's your human spirit. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're not cursed. You're blessed. The witch can't curse you. You're blessed. You can't curse a blessed man. You need to teach your people not to be afraid of the witch. You see, the devil works by fear. Satana. I was talking to somebody from South Africa today. You got to understand that the, the ruling spirit in the world is fear. And the and the much, many of the false prophets are the media. They'll bring a little thing and make it really big and get everybody scared. She was telling me even before this coronavirus broke out in the nation. She said they were digging graves. They were digging the graves and putting it on television and telling the people, this is what's going to happen if you don't do this. You're going to end up in that grave. She said, she said, my God, the people in my whole nation were panicking. You know what I said to my church? Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. You know what we taught our church? God will bring us forth with silver and gold, and there's not one sick person among our tribe. We knock that fear right in its head. And thank God we came through victorious. We want to confront fear with the word. Because it's the word of God that brings forth faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. Now let's look at John 7. John 7. John chapter 7. It says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, 
What verse are you? 37, in? John 7, 37, yeah. yeah. Verse 37, go matsikulo malize, lalikululo, lapando. Jesus stood and cried, saying, Now, this feast was called the Feast of Tabernacles. Think about it. The Feast of Tabernacles. Who are we? We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in us. We are the tabernacle of God in this earth. We are the tabernacle as individuals. And then corporately when we come together, we are also the tabernacle. And then there's one big universal tabernacle. That's how you see the church in three different ways in the New Testament. Amen. Amen. So individually God lives in us. As a local church, when we come together, God lives in us. And then universally in the earth, God lives in us. But we are in this world, we're not of it. And this world sees Jesus through us. Continue. Uh, let me make one more point. There was a priest on this day that would go to a pool that was called the Pool of Siloam. And the word Siloam means to be sent. To, to be sent out. Oh, this is so powerful. And the priest would go with a golden vessel. Gold represents the righteousness of God in the Old Testament. Brass represents judgment and sin. Brass. You understand? Amen. The sacrifice was tied to the brazen altar. The brass. You got it. it was like Jesus when he was tied to the cross. The cross representing sin and judgment. But the priest, he would go to this pool, which meant sent one, and he would get water out of this pool, and he would bring it back, and there would be, there would be a sacrifice of flesh, and the priest would pour water mixed with wine on the flesh. <laughs> Ooh, does anybody know what that's a symbolic of? <laughs> New birth and baptism of the Holy Ghost. The day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It says, Akuti. If any man, what? Thirst. If any man, what? Thirst. Thirst. If any man, what? Thirst. What did Jesus say to the woman at the well? 
Come to me and drink. So this is talking about getting born again. The world needs to get born again. Once you got born again, you started drinking from the water, the well of life in you. And that well is working in your life. As a son of God. Hold your finger there, we're coming right back. And we're going to find out that this is talking about the new birth baptism. In 1 Corinthians 12, and look at verse 13. And verse 13, yeah, for by one spirit, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13. We are all baptized into Hallelujah. one body. We are all a part of the body of Christ. How? By one Holy Spirit that has come to live on the inside of each one of us. We've been born again. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're born again? Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member but many. So, Let's go back to John 7. If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. Every person that's not born again, they need to come to Jesus. That's when they can start drinking of the well of life. Everyone that's born again, you got a well of life in you. You drink from that well every day. There's a well of life there to even heal your body. Because the Bible says in Romans 8, uh, I think it's verse 11, that if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Romans 8, 11, and I could think that in Zimu, I How many of you heard of John G. Lake? He was very famous in Africa at one time. God used him in a mighty way. And John G. Lake had such a revelation of sonship and who we are in Christ and who God is in us. And he went into a place where there was Ebola. Yeah, South Africa, right. He went into South Africa, yes, right? South Africa. He went into South Africa and there was this big Ebola plague. And the people were dying and dying and dying. It was a terrible thing, much worse than this corona thing. And the Lord sent him there. 
The, the Lord sent him to go into this region. Now when God sends you, you can trust him for protection. You understand? And your faith also better be at that point. That's why we need to grow. But he was praying for these people and they would get healed. And, you know, I, I've preached uh, healing revivals in a city that, in America that, that his base, ministry base was from. And we've had great healings in this church. One of the older men, his dad used to preach with John G. Lake. But he was telling me that in Spokane, Washington, they had such a move of God that literally they cleaned out the entire hospital. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's powerful. Amen. 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 But there were some people that asked John G. Lake, how come you don't get this? Why Why don't you die? You know what he said? He said, take that Ebola virus and put it on my hand. And then take it and look at it in a microscope. And they did that. And you know what? When they looked at it under a microscope, the virus was dead. I'm telling you, we can get this well of water springing up in us so strong. You know, if we could teach our people to walk in the Spirit, we'd spend a lot less time having to lay hands on them all the time. Can you see what I'm saying? Everybody's to grow, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, but, but we all can come to that point of walking in complete divine health. I'm not saying not to use doctors, but you can come to a point you don't need a doctor. Man, there was a time in my own life I was sick all the time. But once I got the revelation of healing, thank God those days are over. Oh, thank God those days are over. It hasn't been 100%, but I can tell you something, it's been at least 95%. 95% and anybody that's around me knows I don't get sick. And I used to be sick all the time. I, I take vitamins. I eat good. But most importantly, I trust God. Hallelujah. I know that I got the spirit of life in me. That's the Holy Spirit. And that's part of our new birth package. Did you know that the word saved and the word healed comes from the same Greek word? It's the word sozo. Sozo, Greek. Healing and the new birth, forgiveness, go together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad for the health of God? All right, let's continue. So, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. Well, thank God we've done that and we're drinking. So verse 37 is about new birth. 
But look at verse 38. He that believeth on me. Hallelujah. How many believers do we have here? How many of you believers? How many of you are Christians? How many of you are sons and daughters of God? I am a believer. And what do believers do? They believe. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I believe. 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 And he that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, out of his belly. Hallelujah. Shall flow rivers. That's not talking about a well, that's talking about rivers. How many of you know there's a difference between a well and rivers? In the beginning of the class, we looked at that scripture in Ezekiel where the rivers flowed out of the tabernacle. That scripture is talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Out of us. Flow rivers. Look at your neighbor and say rivers. Tell your neighbor you got nine rivers. To flow out of you. Nine rivers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nine rivers. you go, nine rivers. Out of your belly or out of your innermost being. Talking out of your spirit. And it says, but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe, hallelujah, on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But I'm telling you something. Jesus Resurrected. Yes, He imparted eternal life. They got born again. And then he went off. And he said, Wait. He sat down. Everything was done. And then came that outpouring on the flesh. And on the day of Pentecost, they got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And the beginning of that was speaking with tongues. Speaking in tongues is like a dam on a lake that has a gate. And all of a sudden, that gate is opened up. But it's not just a gate. There's a lot of gates, a lot of water to flow out, to become rivers in all different directions. And the beginning of that is what happened to many of you yesterday. You began to speak in a brand new language. That's the beginning. And as you learn about these powerful gifts that God wants to flow out through you, 
you're going to see that those gifts are going to start flowing. And you'll be doing all kinds of stuff you could never do naturally. We are to do supernatural things in a natural world. Hallelujah. 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 So tell your neighbor, you're not here to do the work of God by yourself. You're not here to do this by yourself. Tell your neighbor, you're not here to do this by yourself. You got a helper. Tell your neighbor you got a helper. And he wants to do supernatural things through you. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. And he wants to do that through believers. Sorry. Before I knew I was going to be standing in the pulpit giving the word, I just started doing this stuff as a believer. Man, I started praying for sick people. Oh, it's God. Hallelujah. <laughs> when I was 16, the discerning of spirits, I saw the nation. I saw the nation. It was also a word of wisdom. I saw I would be going to nations. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Nobody can tell me I'm out of the will of God. I know I'm in the will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For these supernatural gifts of the Holy Ghost. All right. So, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. We're going to take a 10 minute break. Okay. And then we'll be right back. And in, and in our next message, we're going to look through the book of Acts and see that tongues is always, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is always accompanied with speaking in tongues. If you do not speak in tongues, you do not yet have the manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't say you don't have the Holy Spirit. But you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. And God wants you to have that. And I'm going to show you that tongues belongs to that. It's the sign that you have it. And I'm going to show you that from the Word. So let's take a short break. And we'll be right back.